Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, coming to you again from Aoyama Park in Tokyo where the rain stopped just a couple of hours ago. Uh, our new dog woke us up very early this morning because he wanted to go out for a walk and unfortunately I wasn't able to take him out because it was pouring down rain, uh, which is not an unusual thing in June. Uh, June is the rainy season here in Japan. So we've kind of spent our Sunday indoors today uh, uh, working around the house and watching a movie and, uh, and me working in my office. And a couple hours ago the rain finally let up. So I was able to take the dog out for his walk and then I figured before the rain comes back again I'll go ahead and make a video. Uh, the forecast is a promising rain every day this week like they did last week. Though fortunately last week we only got a couple of days of rain. Uh, I hope that the weather clears up soon, but July is around the corner and uh, most of the rain disappears you know, when we get to July. And then July we just have the incredible heat and humidity which hits Japan during the summertime. If you ever plan to visit Japan, I would recommend that you try to come uh, in Hanami season in early April. Uh, it's quite busy here at that time, but it's a very beautiful time of year to visit and also uh, May is a good time to come after the Golden Week holiday when the, the Japanese tourists have all gotten back home and back to work. And the autumn is also a great time. Uh, the weather is just about perfect in October. Uh, if you like doing things outdoors or want to explore the city, October is the best time. Uh, if you like the red leaves and are going to go out to western Japan like Kyoto or Osaka, November is a great time of year to come. However, it does rain a lot in that season, so we have to kind of keep that in mind. But anyway. Uh, today's video is about a camera brand which I, I haven't talked about before on my channel and that is the Petri brand. Now, Petri is a really old manufacturer of cameras in Japan or they were an old uh, manufacturer uh, being founded I think they, they were established in 1907 so they, they'd been around for quite a, a long time and they were mainly a, a manufacturer of lenses and photographic accessories and things like that and uh, they began producing a large number of cameras in the 1950s. Petri is kind of uh, interesting among Japanese manufacturers in that they were very liberal with their design department and they were not afraid to uh, come up with uh, interesting new designs, especially cosmetic designs for their cameras. If you've seen some of the cameras, uh, things like the Petri Pro 7 or even this uh, camera here, this uh, V6, they are quite, uh, the lines and design are quite different from the other more conservative designs used by other companies. Unfortunately, the early Petri cameras were uh, priced mainly for the inexpensive export market and in order to keep the prices down, they were, they were kind of cheap with the quality of the materials and the workmanship. Though the cameras featured really good lenses and they were quite uh, stylish or interesting to look at, you know, they weren't very durable uh, or long-lasting. So uh, early, uh, early cameras are, are kind of hit and miss. If you find a really nice one which is in good condition, I would go ahead and, and pick it up just to have it because uh, really clean working ones are quite rare. And they're kind of represented of a period when Japan was not highly regarded around the world as a manufacturer of quality things. In those days, Japan was the manufacturer of the, the cheap stuff, the kind of kind of like China today. Pretty much the cheap junk, junk you found in stores and the, the junk that they gave away in carnival uh, midway games and things like that was all made in Japan. And these, uh, some of these Petri cameras uh, were very uh, poor quality, I guess is a, maybe a less polite way to say it. However, uh, Petri did make some very high quality cameras. Uh, in particular, my, one of my favorite cameras, the Color 35. It's just an amazing camera. Uh, they're quite expensive now if you can find one that's in good working condition. Uh, six or seven years ago I was hunting around and I happened to find one which was still brand new in the box at an old camera store which you know in, in Japan stores often sit on stock you know for decades uh, and for some reason they never think to mark it down when I say well you know no one has bought this thing in five years maybe I should put like a 25% discount on it and someone will will still buy it but then you know uh, you buy the camera say 40 years later and it still has the original price tag from like 1968 or 1969 on it then it becomes maybe a, a kind of a, a better value but that was the case with the color 35 i found a beautiful brand new in the box black paint petri color 35 and i got it for uh 
was at 25,500 yen, which was, was quite a good price, uh, about $220 at the time, which is about what a, a good used one goes for now. I, I debate with myself about selling it from time to time, but I think it's a rare camera and one of these days it's likely to be worth a lot more, so uh, it sits in my closet in a nice dry place where I don't have to worry about it getting moldy. But anyway, we'll go ahead and talk about the camera which I'm going to be describing today. And it's a Petri SLR camera, and this one is called the V62, which was introduced in the late 1960s. The Petri V62 is kind of a, an oddball camera, like Petri's cameras tend to be. It has a number of... It, 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 it's kind of conventional in, in its overall appearance, but when you look at it close, it's quite unique compared to other cameras uh, of the time. Uh, it took me a little work or a little bit of time to, to get myself familiar with it. I've only had this for a few days. It arrived in the mail, I think, on Thursday or Friday. And I, I took it out this morning and have been playing around with it. And yeah, it, it, it's quite interesting. I'll go ahead and run over all the controls and features and show you uh, some of the quirky things that uh, it, it, it has on it. Uh, the most usual thing, of course, is the ordinary film rewind lever. And next to that is the first oddball thing, which is the film counter, which is located on the opposite side of the camera that you would normally find it. And when I was testing out the camera, I, I, I wound the shutter and I noticed that the film counter dial didn't turn. And the first thing I thought was, ah oh man, it's, it's not working. I, I, there had to be something wrong with this camera, and of course it had to be something complicated like a film counter dial, which I've never worked on before. But then I pressed the uh, shutter button, and bang, it just switched the next number. And I found out that the shutter counter doesn't count the frame until after you push the button, which is, I guess, quite a more, a more accurate way of uh, counting the exposures in the camera. And uh, this is, wow! Uh, an odd thing about the top of the camera is this kind of raised band which goes all the way across. And you know, I would think, well, that's kind of an interesting feature to like, you know, help prevent uh, dents or whatever if it's kind of like a reinforcement. But then it doesn't actually cover the top of the prism, which you have to worry about getting dented. If the prism is going to get dented, it's going to get dented on the front corners, not here, you know, between the, the, the peak here and the flash shoe. So yeah, it's mainly just a cosmetic feature. Uh, the Petri V6 does have a hot shoe flash, which is quite convenient if you're using a more modern strobe flash. Over here we have the shutter speed dial, which uh, has a rather limited range compared to other cameras of the era. It runs from half a second to one five hundredth of a second. And over here we have the film winding and shutter charging dial. On the back here we have the eyepiece, which is dovetailed all the way around, so you can easily adapt an eye cup or a diopter eyepiece to it. The original Petri parts are quite hard to find, but uh, in my experience I find I can usually adapt uh, things from other brands onto yet other brands. Uh, I can use, say, a, a Pentax uh, diopter adjustment on an Olympus OM camera or vice versa, and I found that I can adapt uh, Canon uh, eye cups and things like that, and one of those might actually work on, on this. So, yeah, it, it, it's better to have a feature like this than not to have it. Uh, not much else is going on on the back. Over here we have the release for the uh, film door. This uh, latch you have to pull down on the bottom. Uh, the Petri uh, V6 features cloth shutter curtains. It's, they're actually made of silk, which is impregnated with rubber and uh, quite durable. I don't often find... Though I find these cameras which have all kinds of problems, the shutter curtains usually don't seem to be one of those problems. Uh, on the front we come across another quirky feature and that is the location of the shutter button which is on the front. And these were put on the front of the camera intentionally. The idea was to reduce shake and blur from the camera. By uh, squeezing the camera from front to back and depressing the shutter button, uh, it was thought that it would reduce blur and vibration and more than likely it does. Uh, however, it, it makes the camera a little bit more complicated to manufacture and uh, I guess that's why the mainstream manufacturers didn't really go along with this. You'll find this feature on, of course, the Petri cameras. You'll find it on earlier cameras like the uh, Yashica Pinta series and also on some Topcon cameras. Uh, I kind of like the idea behind it, but uh, yeah, it takes a little getting used to, getting used to for me. 
We have these two tabs here on the front and this is for mounting the Petri light meter which locks down on top and engages the uh, shutter speed dial which gives you kind of a coupled metering system. The only problem is that I, I don't have a lot of luck with finding working meters. Usually about one out of every three that I come across is working and working accurately. Uh, below the shutter button we have the self timer and uh, self timer release button. And then moving on to the lens we find the next quirky thing and that is the the bayonet mount system where the bayonet is attached to the camera and not to the lens as it is in like the Canon uh, SLR series or early Canon SLRs. And I guess this makes kind of logical economic sense. You know, you, when you're manufacturing the lenses and cameras with a, a bayonet uh, style setup, it makes more sense to use just a single bayonet ring on the camera rather than manufacture all the lenses with their own bayonet rings. This cuts down on the cost and the complexity of the lenses. So uh, not a bad idea. Uh, Petri's lenses are actually very good quality with good quality glass in them and are quite good performers. Uh, this is the standard lens for the V62. This is a, a 55mm f1.8 CC auto lens. Uh, the CC stands for color corrected and auto is for auto diaphragm. So when the mirror actuates, uh, the lens will stop down to the aperture selected on the ring automatically quite easy to uh, put the, the lens on the camera. There's a red mark on the top wing of the diaphragm which you put on the red dot and then you turn the diaphragm ring clockwise and the lens is mounted. Uh, to the rear here we have the aperture ring which of course uh, f1.8 to f16 and we have uh, the focusing ring. Uh, odd thing is the silver ring around the center, but uh, actually it's not a bad feature because it makes the the number stand out on the depth of field uh, depth of field scale and makes them a little bit easier to see. Uh, and also it adds, uh, I guess, it fits with the overall style of the camera. You can tell this is a camera that they spent a lot of time with the, you know, working on the cosmetics, like some of the other oddball Petri cameras. When I think about the Petri cameras, I, I think about that uh, they were designed, I think, for the American market. My favorite Petri camera is the Petri Pro 7, which is that black and silver uh, rangefinder camera, which looks like something from the old Lost in Space series from the 1960s. And, you know, something that they would carry, you know, while, while romping around Mars with Robbie the Robot. And, yeah, a lot of the cameras, uh, uh, the V6 included, have that odd kind of style to them. On the bottom, not much going on there. We just have a standard quarter inch tripod socket and of course the release button, which allows you to release the film winding mechanism and rewind the film. Uh, Petri produced uh, a small assortment of lenses for the, uh, the V6 series. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with them, but I do know that the 55 f1.8 is a good lens and a, a good performer. And if I were going to buy one of these cameras, I would probably just use it as a single lens camera anyway. Uh, if I'm going to go into a multiple lens camera, I'm going to want one which has kind of a great range, like a really wide angle lens, like an 18 or 28 millimeter, a good normal lens, like a 50 millimeter lens, then something like a, a longer, I, I like longer zooms, uh, like my 50 to 300 uh, Nikkor that I like to use on my uh, Nikon cameras. For a camera like the Petri, this would be just uh, you know, a good camera to shoot around the city, something to take uh, while traveling. It doesn't require any batteries or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about uh, having to find a place to, to plug in and recharge your camera batteries. All you have to do is put in the film. Uh, since it doesn't have a built-in light meter, you'll need to, to carry a light meter with you or use a light meter app with your smartphone. But yeah, quite a good camera. Uh, when this one arrived uh, last week, I wasn't expecting much. I actually didn't buy this camera to get this camera. It came with a lot of like... Uh, uh, four cameras and there was one I was interested in which was not this one and uh, this one actually turned out to be better than the camera which I, I originally wanted and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, quite surprisingly this camera has no flaws, no dents, no nothing. It's quite nice. So uh, uh, the only thing this, uh, this camera actually needs to get it into uh, working condition is just to, to clean the dust off the prism and add new light seals and otherwise it's good to go. But anyway, 
Uh, that's my uh, review about the Petri V62 uh, SLR camera. I'll be posting this camera for sale shortly in my Etsy and eBay stores. You can find links to my stores in the description below the video. I'll be doing more videos about vintage Japanese cameras uh, in the near future and also about uh, film photography and photography in uh, Japan. If you're interested in seeing these videos, please subscribe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you tune in again soon.